you don't have to be studying self-development, psychology, spirituality for long before you come across this idea of limiting beliefs. They're a huge part of coaching. Many, many people and influencers on Instagram will talk about beliefs and how they shape reality. And there's a lot of truth to that. Our beliefs about ourselves, about the world can really limit the way that we behave, what we think is possible, and also the, the kind of self-fulfilling prophecy, the confirmation bias that comes from this conceptual framework that we apply to our experience and, and to reality. This is also the core tenant of cognitive behavioral therapy to challenge and reframe beliefs. But part of the issue is that when we talk about beliefs, it can feel as if it's as simple as a thought that is unconscious, that when made conscious, you can change. That it is just language, it's just words to reorder in the mind. Now, of course, there's much more to it. Beliefs are part of a holistic system. They're not just narratives. They are embedded in a collection, often of very rigid and solidified memories that come with their own emotional aspect. They come with their own sensations in the body. There is a complete full dimension to a belief and it's not always so straightforward to just change the words, to change the language, to, to change the cognition. This is one area that I see is, is very much oversimplified in the coaching slash spiritual awakening space. Because for some people, you know, those, those imprints, what we might call samkaras in a, a Buddhist Hindu context, or complexes in a, in a Jungian context, can be so deeply ingrained that working with language, working with what we might call story has limitations. Many people are in therapy for years working on their own limiting beliefs. It's not because they just need help <laughs> reframing and, and writing a different story. Again, that is impactful and, and CBT is one of the most demonstrated successful approaches to, to therapy, although I think that's now up for debate. But there's a, a depth and an intricacy to the full system of beliefs that has to be approached. And I do think that there are often multiple factors, multiple practices that are required to overcome limiting beliefs. I've been doing this work for probably getting on for, for 20 years now. I mean, yeah, probably the age of 15, you know, I, I first had an interest in self-help and, and I've been a, a junkie since then in that respect. And I have beliefs that have stayed since then and, and they have much less sway and their charge is, is greatly reduced whilst, you know, others that have remained quite, quite deeply entangled in my, my psyche and in my emotional body. And I, I say that just to to allow for patience with this because it, it does often seem that there's this idea that, oh, that, that's the only thing holding you back is a belief. But when you see a belief as a holistic system, a, a complex system that can be embedded in emotions, like relics of the past that are terrifying to visit and revisit or owning those relics of the past can feel like a surrender of the, the image of who you are or even you know the the way that these limiting systems of belief and feeling and memory can keep you safe because if you don't have them well then what will you pursue in life and will that pursuit of something different lead to vulnerability and pain in a, in a different way will it lead to rejection in a different way Will it lead to you saying to yourself, well, I had no limitations and I went for what I wanted and still didn't get it. 
is that worse than not trying in the first place? <laughs> These are all very complex and, and deeply ingrained processes and practices that can't just be undone overnight and, and might require a lot of patience. At the same time, a lot of progress can be made by simply bringing these beliefs to the surface. But as you know, the, the Yoga Sutras, for example, really demonstrate perfectly well how these deep grooves of habit and behavior in the, in the, the mind body, in the emotional space, they just aren't easily overcome. And it could be that different practices and modalities are required to, to lessen the groove over time. It might be that a, a significant emotional release is required. It might be that there's work on the body. It might be that there's a, a degree of forgiveness required to yourself. It might be that just to really accept that these beliefs are there and to unpack in a a narrative to understand maybe through therapy through talking through because you know something with therapy is that transference and counter transference is absolutely essential it's not just sharing and changing a story it's the synthesis and the alchemy of having another person in a therapist or coach be with you in that space and it's almost like they become an extension of your psyche and can hold space for that process to increase and expedite that process on a deeper level. So even though the words are changing, there's actually also a emotional energetic re release or uh, movement. If for example, in that context, you feel seen and accepted, you might see and accept that solidified emotional narrative complex from the past and that can kind of loosen some of that charge it can remove the density of the groove of that past experience so be patient with yourself when it comes to to beliefs definitely do the work to to surface them to understand them to almost have an inventory of what your beliefs are what your tendencies are where your limitations are just to get an understanding as a starting point, but then from there to be patient, to do the work at a cognitive level, at a reframing level, but then energetically through meditation, through forgiveness, through compassion, through body work, through behavior as well. You know, this is super important, like cognitive behavioral therapy, to behave in ways that defy the validity of limiting beliefs to, to build up that positive um, anchor, that positive feedback loop so that they also lose their charge because their validity is challenged over time. These are all practices that contribute to overcoming limiting beliefs. And even, you know, even in that, like positive affirmations have a role just to kind of drop in a different point of view, a different perspective. Sharing and getting feedback from someone that you love has a role to conflict, to, to again, challenge the validity of that limitation. Even thinking of times where you've acted in a way that defied a limiting belief is another way to just loosen its hold because it is an illusion ultimately. And there is a, a myriad of, of um, methods to approach limiting beliefs in a way that can transform. If you get to the core of that, if you transform from the core, it's less likely that they're gonna hold you back in future, that you're not keeping this work at a superficial level. And it, it can happen quickly, it might not, but either way, seeing limiting beliefs as an opportunity to do deeper work is what will set you forwards as you continue on the path. So you can even try, you know, next time you journal to, to write down five statements about yourself in the world. So five statements about who you are and who you are not. I am a dot, dot, dot. You know, it might be that I am a loving person or it might be I am not good socially. I am 
socially awkward at times. I am clumsy. I am not productive enough, right? All just whatever comes to mind. And then to see if from that you can, you can identify different emotions, any memories that surface and just start to, to build that inventory of your beliefs. And then when you want to go one step further, you can start to set goals that defy those beliefs that challenge the validity of them. Obviously, if you're really struggling in, in a certain way, let's just say you've got extreme social anxiety, you don't want to push yourself too much because you can kind of maybe set back if you feel like it's not a positive experience. So just in manageable ways from those beliefs, come up with two or three or maybe even five just to balance that out. Alternatives or challenges to that again, you're, you're not becoming confined or limited by that. You, you start to just see them as, as relics. They might be useful, they might not, but the more that you don't give validity to limiting beliefs, the freer you become.